Special in-game events are probably one of my favorite things in the early Pokemon games. Having an event to actually catch the mythical Pokemon instead of simply receiving it is a lot more fun. There is one problem with these events however, and that is not being able to replay these events after all these years. The only way to play them back in the day was going to a real life event and unlocking them through mystery gift. Allowing you for example to get the Aurora ticket and catch the Oxys. But unfortunately these events don't exist anymore meaning that you cannot catch the Oxys after restarting your games. There are of course backdoor ways to still play them, like using Action Replay or the Pomac Battery Glitch. But I want something more authentic. I want to unlock these events through mystery gifts like it was intended. Luckily for us the Pokemon community acquired the distribution ROM. This ROM unlocks the Aurora ticket through mystery gift in Fire Red and Leaf Green. So together with my friend Undead Reality, we decided to analyze this ROM and modify it to distribute all the other mystery gift events. Let's get started and see what makes this ROM tick. Let's first take a look at how the distribution ROM works in general. For this we need two GBA systems equipped with a wireless adapter, the distribution ROM and an English copy of Fire Red or Leaf Green. When booting up the distribution ROM, it will first check if the wireless adapter is connected. And if so, it will start distributing the Aurora ticket. On Fire Red or Leaf Green, we can now go to the Mystery Gift menu and select to receive a Wonder Card through wireless communication. And a few seconds later, you have received your Wonder Card. This will make a man in green appear on the first floor of the Pokemon Center, and talking to him will unlock the event and give you the Aurora ticket. From this alone, we can already gather two things that are sent over by the distribution ROM. A wonder card and a script that is executed by talking to the man in green. Luckily the structure of both have already been researched in the past, so they'll save us some work. But before we dive deep into these structures, there's one more thing worth noting. And that is that the distribution cartridge does not work for Emerald at the moment. When trying to receive the wonder card, Emerald will give me an error. This means that at some point there is a check to make sure we're communicating with the right games. So one thing we will need to do is find this check and change it to make it compatible with Emerald. I think that is all the information we can gather from this at the moment. It's about time to analyze the ROM and... Hmm... Where do we even start? We will need a more basic understanding of what this all means before we can even do anything. All these seemingly random bytes represent machine code. Machine code is something that the GBA can understand and execute. But for us it's not that readable in its current form. To make it more readable we will need to convert the machine code into assembly. How this is exactly done is better understood with a few examples. The GBA uses two instruction sets. The 32-bit ARM instruction set and the 16-bit thump instruction set. Our example will look at a 16-bit thump instruction. Our first step is converting this hexadecimal number towards binary. Next we will need to figure out what kind of instruction it is. For this we need a table that contains the structure of all the possible instructions. And with it we can figure out what format our instruction has by comparing our binary number to the table. And that shows that this is an ALU operation. With this format we can figure out what the operation code is and what registers are used. So we use registers 0 and 3 and operation code 12. But what does operation code 12 mean? From a separate table it shows that operation code 12 is an OR instruction. So this instruction does an OR operation with register 0 and 3. Like this you can use both instruction sets to convert the entire ROM in a more readable form. Luckily for us there are tools out there that can do this for us. But it's good to know how it is done. Now that we know more about how the ROM is structured, we can start working on our to-do list. First we have finding and modifying the wonder card. The best way to go about finding the wonder card is by looking for some text that is used in it. The title, subtitle, body and footer of the wonder card all use the normal character encoding that is used in the Gen 3 games. The title for example converts to this hexadecimal string. Next we can search for this in the ROM and luckily that brings us to the wonder card. Like mentioned before we already know the structure of the wonder card. So we'll use that to analyze the most important values and create a wonder card for all the mystery gift events. Let's start with the event ID. The value for this is set to 0 for Aurora ticket. After that comes Mystic ticket and the old C map. The other events either were not released or not preserved, so we've decided to list them as the following. 
Next up is the Icon. The Icon is shown in the top right corner of the Wonder Card. And for the Aurora ticket it shows up as a question mark. And that is because we can't choose items for the Icon, only the species. So we will keep the question mark for most of the events. But we will choose the Egg Icon for the Wish Egg Wonder Card. One of the last things we need to change is the text on the Wonder Card. We already know how the characters are encoded, because we use the text to find the Wonder Card in the first place. So let's start changing some text. First we will change the subtitle to only say exchange card. This will make it not tied to a specific event that happened. The other text can for most of the Wonder Cards stay the same. We only have to change what the specific event is about. The only Wonder Card that has very different text is the Altering Cave event. Because it doesn't distribute an item. It unlocks Pokemon to catch in the Altering Cave. So we changed it accordingly. Lastly we can change the background of the Wonder Card. There are a total of 8 different background types that we can choose from. We decided to give each event a unique background. But we'll show them when we get to the point of unlocking them in the game. And with that we have created all the Wonder Cards we need. Now we need to figure out how to change the actual script of the event. Like mentioned before the structure of this is also research. But it is a bit less helpful for us. The only thing we can really learn from this is what the max length of the script can be. So we can't use this to easily find the script. But perhaps we can find it using a similar method we did with the wonder card. What we can do is search for some text that is used when talking to the man in green. Thank you for using the mystery gift system. When we convert this to hexadecimal and search for it in the ROM, we luckily find the script for the Aurora ticket. Now we need to figure out how the script actually works. We could figure it out by looking at the assembly code of the script, but there is an easier way to read this. There is a program called XSE, which is used for scripting and modding the Gen 3 Pokemon games. This tool allows us to easily understand and modify the Wonder Card script. So let's take a quick look into how the script works. First it checks if the event has already been received or played. And if not, it will set the necessary flags for enabling the event and give you the Aurora ticket. These are the flags that are used in the script. So to change this for example to a Mystic Ticket script, we have to change all these flags and the item we get. But for the Mystic Ticket we need to add one more flag. This is because we can both fight ho and Lugia on Averrock Island. This will in turn make the script a few bytes longer. But this won't be an issue, right? Right? It's an issue. We will have to add this to our to-do list. While we are here, let's move on to our next goal on the to-do list. Getting the Aurora ticket to work for Emerald. When trying to have them communicate, it will give us the error of You can't receive a wonder card from this trainer. To fix this issue, we'll have to dive a bit deeper. We decided to start looking between the communication differences over the wireless adapter between Fire Red and Emerald. When comparing the transmissions between the two, I noticed that the wonder card and the script are not sent to Emerald. But before these are even transmitted however, the game itself sends data to the ROM. This is also done by Emerald. And when we compare the data that are sent between the two games, we find some differences. There is a good chance that these values are checked in the ROM, and are the reason for Emerald not working. So let's try to find these values in the ROM as well. The first value that is sent over by both games is 101 in hexadecimal. And it wouldn't surprise me if this value is checked for validity. When searching for this value in the ROM, we find a couple of instances where it is used, but only one is used in a compare instruction. In this function there are four other compare instructions, which also match up with the data sent by Fire Red. So let's try and change this function in the ROM to match Emerald's data. Now we just try out our newly made ROM and... It works! We can now send over the data from the distribution cartridge to Emerald. The Aurora ticket script however doesn't work yet. It first of all checks the wrong flags in the game, so the delivery guy won't even give you the ticket. Other than that we also have to change the dialogue to Lilligove instead of Vermillion. But after changing those things the script now works perfectly for Emerald. We can now use the Aurora ticket to get to Birth Island and catch the Oxus. The script by the way did get a bite shorter because of the dialogue change. But that didn't cause an issue. It only causes an issue if the script is too long. And that brings us to the next point. Enabling the max length of the script that we can use. 
Obviously we are overriding some important data by inserting longer scripts into the ROM. But what is this data? This data contains global variables that are referenced all throughout the ROM. So if you want to insert a longer script, we need to move all the global variables to a different place and change all the references accordingly. And once we've done that, we've unlocked the full potential of the ROM. We can now unlock all events in Fire Red, Leaf Green and Emerald. Let's go through them one by one. First we start with the Mystic Ticket. With the Mystic Ticket we can go to Naval Rock to fight and catch both ho -Oh and Lugia. We already talked about the script earlier for this, so let's move on to the next event, the Eon Ticket. With the Eon Ticket we can now go to the Southern Island to catch the other Eon Pokemon in the game. For the script we have to again make sure that we use the correct flags. But unfortunately there's no flag for if we have already obtained the ticket. Because this event was never released through Mystery Gift. So we decided to use an unused Mystery Gift flag for this. Right below the flags of the other events. And the last of these type of events is the old sea map. And was never released outside of Japan. With the old sea map we can go with Mr. Briny to Faraway Island. And here you can play hide and seek to eventually fight and catch Mew. The dialogue of the script is a little different and is unique for this event. But other than that it also works exactly the same. We're getting close now to finishing the mystery gift events. Next up is the altering cave. This event was never released, not even in Japan. So here's how the altering cave works. In the game itself is an array that determines what Pokemon appears in the altering cave. Without this event the index of the array is always zero and will make sure that Zubat will always appear. And once this index increases, other Pokemon can appear as well. These are Mareep, Pineco, Houndour, Teddy Ursa, Apom, Shuckle, Standler and Smeargle. So one Pokemon appears in the cave at a time for each possible index. So what the script does is increase the value of the index so that different Pokemon can appear. It will do this each time you talk to the man in green. So if you want a different Pokemon to appear, you have to talk to this man again. This also means that the event only works if you have the script running in the game. So if you delete the wonder card, you'll be stuck on the last value that was generated. For our last event we have the Wish Eggs. These eggs were released through Mystery Gift at the Pokemon Center in New York for Fire Red and Leaf Green. And when you would connect to the distribution ROM, you would get one of the following eggs at random. A Farfetch, Drowsy, Execute, Licky Tongue, Chansey or Kangaskhan. All these Pokemon have the move Wish and another unique move they don't normally learn. Like for example a Drowsy with Belly Drum or a Chansey that knows Sweet Scent. How this script works is better explained by my friend Undead Reality. He has already been working on these scripts before we even started on this project. So he will explain more about how these work. These scripts definitely took a good chunk of time when I first learned about them. However, instead of giving a ticket to battle a Pokemon, you were given an egg. What's so special about a Pokemon egg I can just breed for myself, you may ask? Well, the event eggs were given out via Joyspot software, much like the Aurora ticket. However, the Wonder Card and the scripts containing the Pokemon haven't been preserved yet. So we have to use a custom egg script that was also included in the Mystery Gift tool made by Soloku. Long story short, whenever you talk to the man in green, the game generates the Pokemon egg, sets the location met to Fateful Encounter, and finally sets the moves to complete the process. You'll walk around and whenever it hatches, you'll be greeted with one of the six Wish Pokemon. Again, since we don't have the original distribution software that had the randomization functions, we had to put each event into their own separate ROM. And with that, we have covered all Mystery Gift events. At this point you might think that we're done. But there's one thing left for us to do. Currently the ROM only shows the text, now sending Aurora ticket. But this needs to be changed to the respective events. So how do we do that? How do these graphics exactly work? The whole graphic is made out of little 8x8 cubes, or 64 pixels in total. And to fill in one of these cubes, we only need 32 bytes. But how is that possible? Well, each graphic has their own color palette, with a maximum of 16 colors. Each 4 bits of the graphic then represents an index of that palette. So all these indexes combined with the color palette, we can create the graphics shown on the screen. Now we only need to actually create the images for each of the events. We already have a lot of letters that we can use from the original. But we still need to make some letters of our own. This took quite a bit of work, but the end result turned out really good. 
Now that it's finished we can insert them back in the ROM and see the amazing result on original hardware. We went from a ROM that can only distribute the Aurora ticket to fire red and leave green to unlocking all mystery gift events in the English versions of the games and even let it show the correct graphics on the screen. There are of course still a few things we could do in the future, like having all the Wish X in one ROM to distribute them at random or creating distribution ROMs for other languages like Japanese or German. But for now we've reached the end of the video. I want to once again thank and shout out my friend Undead Reality. We both worked very hard the last few months on this to research the ROM and figure everything out. This experience has been nothing but amazing and we couldn't have done it without the Project Pokemon and DigiX communities to help preserve this event distribution ROM for years to come. We can't wait to show you what's in store for the next video, so here's a little sneak peek. I have to say it's truly amazing to finally be able to unlock all these events and play them whenever I want on original hardware. It is a dream come true for me. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one.